In recent years, China has collaborated with Pacific Island nations through the Belt and Road Initiative, participating in significant industrial manufacturing projects, infrastructure, and livelihood projects in various Pacific Island nations. The cooperation has not only brought tangible benefits to the local people, but also serves as a template for success in the region. Now, the re-establishment of diplomatic relations between China and Nauru opens a new chapter of bilateral cooperation. So during the joint press conference that just got concluded not long ago, he said that we look forward to the practical cooperation that's going to happen between Nauru and China. So can you share with us here about what uh, are some of the main areas do you particularly look forward to for both countries to collaborate? One of the great things that China has is that it sees development partners as equal partners. China looks forward to assisting them with. So in these areas, we're looking at areas of fisheries. Mm -hmm. We are a small nation, land-wise, but we are a big ocean nation right. with a very big EEZ that rivals the EEZ of other countries. And therefore, that's one area. One area of practical development also is our phosphate industry. China, especially with its global initiatives, mm -hmm. will look forward to those practical benefits that will actually start happening on island. And I believe that you might also have heard about China's Belt and Road Initiative, mm. which was a very visionary initiative uh, proposed by mm. our President, President mm. Xi Jinping, in 2013 and has now gained global attention. And the Pacific Island countries, they are located at the uh, southward extension mm. of South, this, uh, South for us. Indeed, and also have been actively involved in its development. So what is your understanding of this initiative and does Nauru intend to join it in the future? We, it will be my advice when I go back home to our president and to cabinet and caucus. What negative thing can you say about the BRI? Nothing. This is absolutely a positive initiative. When we debated this issue of the One China Principle in Parliament, Mm -hmm. I used the BRI as an example. What did and, you say about uh, it? Well, I basically said, well, let's take this initiative that was launched 10 years ago in, in, in China, mm -hmm. the Belt and Road Initiative. And I gave this, uh, basically, because it's historic. It comes from the Silk Road. I've always been uh, an admirer of history uh, and a student of history. Mm -hmm. And seeing what the Silk Road did to all the economies, all the countries along, all, the road. At, along the road. And those were basically the cities. Yeah. And as you said a bit earlier, that actually now some of the projects in Nauru are already contracted by mm. Chinese companies, including the uh, redevelopment of the Iwo Harbor, as yes. well as uh, the, uh, the photo botanic, uh, <laughs> photo botanic system that you just mentioned, they're mm. all taking ship uh, mm. in the country. Mm. So what kind of economic uh, impact do you anticipate from those projects and what kind of uh, potential of collaboration did you uh, look forward to? Well, of course, the, um, the solar panels has a major economic impact. It'll affect the prices of electricity and utilities back in Nauru. They will, of course, drop by the implementation of more solar panels and more green energy into Nauru. The ports will be a game changer. It is. We've we will be equal to other countries in the Pacific who have ports so ships can easily come in, fishing vessels can come in. Like other countries have established canneries and, uh, and, and, and fish loining plants within that port area, we can do the same thing. Our fisheries people will be coming here sh shortly and they're looking forward to establishing a fishing industry. As soon as the port's done, a fishing industry that will be able to feed into China.